Welcome to Viking Radio Theater. My name is Walter Lutch. I'm the production director for our show, and I'm proud to introduce you to a whole new season of student-produced radio drama made right here in Bellingham. Viking Radio Theater is a monthly, hour-long broadcast written, acted, and recorded by the students of Western Washington University and our local community. You can listen to our program here on KMRE 102.3 as part of the Community Playhouse and on Western's KUGS 89.3. All of our episodes are also available anytime on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash vikingradiotheater. If you're interested in voice acting, script writing, or sound editing and effects, consider being a part of our show. You can get more details by sending us an email at vikingradiotheater at gmail.com. Now for our first segment, The Last Man on Earth by Eaton Lowenstein. A fast food restaurant. The world has ended. The restaurant is a mess. Dirty, gross, obviously one of the last buildings still intact. Trevor stumbles in. He's a weak-looking man in his early thirties. He's barely survived the apocalypse. Trevor starts digging through the trash. He finds a wrapper and starts licking it. Oh, God! I can still taste the fake cheese. That's the most delicious thing I have ever— From behind an overturned table pops Lana. She's also in her early thirties and looks equally ragged. She's holding a sharp stick. Whoever you are, get the hell out of my restaurant! Please, please don't hurt me. I'm so sorry. Don't make me use this stick. It's very sharp. I don't want trouble. I was just looking for food. I... Lana? How do you know my name? Who are you? Lana, it's me, Trevor. We went to high school together. Remember? Spartan pride? I don't know anybody named Trevor. Lana, please put down the stick. I promise I'm not going to hurt you. (laughs) Ha, like you could hurt me. Good point. I'm not going to try to hurt you. I'm just looking for food. Trevor? Yes, Trevor. You have to remember me. I asked you out at least a dozen times. You brought me a rose every single day for the entire month of February. Yes! I remember now. That was so creepy! Well, you told me that then. Many times. But I didn't give up. Have you been following me? No, no. Not this time. I promise. In fact, I haven't seen another person in weeks. Me either. Does that mean... Are we the last two people alive? Could be. Did you see California on the news? Yeah. California went fast. Did not see that coming. So did everything else. I heard Japan got launched into space. That sounds unlikely. Right. It does. Lana, I hate to bring this up. What? Well... I don't know if you remember senior year. Sort of. I was dating Carlton. We got high a lot. Yes. Carlton. Mr. Lacrosse. What a useless sport. It got him into college. It got me all excited. But still, it's a stupid game. That dumb stick catching balls running around. Senior year? Yes. Well, I rented that limo. I drove to your front door. Oh, my God, yes. I saved up for a month for that. I pulled overnight shifts at the pretzel factory. Anyway, I drove up to your house and asked you to prom. Which I was already going to with Carlton. But I had to ask. You were my dream girl. You are all I thought about for four years of high school. And I said no, because you were so creepy. That's not what you said. You said only if you were the last man on earth. I I was trying to be polite. I didn't... You did all this for me? You blew up the world just so you could have a chance to date me? What? No. That's insane. I didn't do any of this. You want to go out for coffee? You find us some coffee and I might actually consider it. Really? Yeah, I'm serious. What do you have to offer me? Food? Clean water? No. I don't have anything like that. But we can look together. As boyfriend and girlfriend. As boyfriend and girlfriend? I'm not going to say this is a good thing, watching all those people burn to death. That can't be good. But you have to admit, this was a little fadish. I'm happy to see you, if that means anything. It's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I know, because I wrote everything you ever said to me down in my diary. Please, call it a journal. Plus there's the whole repopulating the earth thing... You're still creepy. Sorry. I got carried away. 
I was a teenager back then when I was in love with you. Still got some residual hormones going through the old bones. And think about it. Let's say we do have kids. Then what? They have kids with each other? So gross. Right. I hadn't really thought it through. I really missed being with another person, having someone to talk to, to watch my back, just to be around. Can I say maybe? Really? Only if you can stop being creepy. I can. I'm so excited to finally be your- Another person burst into the restaurant. He is in his early thirties as well. Good looking and looks much cleaner and more put together than Trevor and Lana. This is Carlton. He holds a beat up lacrosse stick. Carlton? Lana? My lord, it's you! Oh, come on. How did you- what are you doing here? I'm out scouting. What else? This is the only building with a roof for miles. Good to see you, Carlton. Now, if you don't mind... How is this even possible? I was able to stay one step ahead of the game with my superior fitness and this bad boy. He shows them his lacrosse stick. I used it to pick the last apples from the tree out by the old windmill. I was able to catch the rocks back when those crazy mobs were out throwing them at everybody. I used it to cradle a baby bird, which I nursed back to health. Generally, lacrosse has saved my life. Oh, my. I have a small house, all to myself, about a mile away. I dug a well, so I've got clean water. I've discovered some local roots and shrubs that are surprisingly delicious. This is fascinating, but my girlfriend <coughs> and I were just about to... Have you seen anybody else? Not for three weeks. My poor grandmother. I managed to keep her alive for so long, but we ran out of her medication. My poor sweet Nanu died in my arms. We're so sorry to hear that, and we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Trevor, you're being insensitive. Sorry for looking out for us. Us? We just agreed to be my- I did, but I'm having second thoughts. No. I can't get in between you two. I'm not that kind of guy. We were dating for 30 seconds, Tops. You're fine. You sure? Of course. You guys broke up once before, remember? Something obviously didn't work out between- I am so sorry. We should have tried to make the long distance thing work. No, I'm sorry. It was too much pressure. You had your whole life ahead of you. I should have given you some space. I never found another girl as amazing as you. None of my other boyfriends even came close to you. I'm right here. You should come live with me. Both of you. Lana, you can stay with me. And you, Guy, I have a basement you can stay in. Trevor, we used to carpool in elementary school? Right, Trevor. Wait, Trevor? Trevor, the guy who built a treehouse in the park across from your parents' place? Yep, same Trevor. That was public property. I had every right. You're uninvited. You can fend for yourself. You're creepy. But I'm going to die out here. You think about that next time you're tempted to be creepy. Great to catch up with you. They exit, leaving Trevor alone. The End That was The Last Man on Earth by Eaton Lowenstein. Trevor was played by Matthew Page, Lana was played by Rebecca Reeder, Carlton was played by Trent Browning, and the narrator was Jackie Campbell. Before we continue, enjoy a short word from our sponsors. Are you or a loved one out of work because you were beat up from the superhero of the week? Did a henchman leak radioactive waste into your evil lair? Did you or a loved one blow up New York? Here at Johnson Johnson and McSneed, attorneys at law, we specialize in giving supervillains the representation they deserve. Whether you need a quick insanity plea, your bail for kidnapping reporters too high, or you want to sue the cape off of someone, Johnson Johnson and McSneed have your back. Our defendants will have you out of jail and back to work in no time. Just listen to the real-life testimonial of small-time villain Sword Hands. Yeah, so like, I was trying to rob this jewelry store. Ordinary day, right? In comes little Miss Laser Eyes and tries to fry me. I was all, lethal force is not justified in a burglary. Am I right? 
Johnson, Johnson, and McSneed agreed with me and helped me to get a restitution or whatever. Dude, she had to pay me. Totally awesome, man. I don't even have to rob anymore because the settlement was so big. Worth it. We know that if you have superpowers, it can be so easy to turn to a life of crime. And we don't blame you. We're lawyers. We're experts on taking people's money. So, the next time you need to get out of jail, hire someone you trust. Hire Johnson, Johnson, and McSneed. You're listening to Viking Radio Theater on KMRE 102.3. We hope you have as much fun listening to our gag commercials as we have creating them. Listen to them all on their own on our YouTube channel. For our next script, we have Astronaut in a Cabin by Matthew Page. Dave? Dave? Report in Dave. I repeat, report. Report! Dave! Dave. Sarah is sitting up, panting in bed, awoken from her nightmare. She gets out of bed and makes herself a cup of tea. Penny wakes up from the commotion and enters the kitchen to check on Sarah. Trouble sleeping? Yeah. Hey, want some tea? No thanks. I'm fine. Same nightmare again? Nothing like tea to calm the nerves. Avoiding the problem doesn't solve the problem, you know? The tea is Earl Grey with lots of honey, the way you like it. Sarah, talk to me. It's been three months since, since you had to take a break. You need to talk to someone, if not me, someone. I... I know. It wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. He'd wanted to take the week off for our honeymoon. If we'd gone, he wouldn't be... It's still not your fault. I was selfish. A chance to study Haley's Comet hands-on? Who'd pass up that? That's like a -a once-in-a-lifetime mission. God, I'd kill to be on your crew if I was an astronaut like you guys. Just to see that blazing ball of ice so close with my own two eyes. It wasn't worth it. Not at the cost of losing him. Don't be so hard on yourself. How could you know what would have happened? There is always a risk. Space. Beautiful, but deadly. Yes, it's dangerous out there, but you were both... Well, you! No one could have convinced either of you from not going out there to see Haley's Comet with your own eyes. We were just collecting a few samples. We should have used the drones, but we wanted to do it by hand. I wanted to touch that comet, to get up and personal to that dirty snowball. But it was just collecting samples. You never said what went wrong. You've seen the news reports. You know what happened. Reports only say so much. You never gave a statement on what happened. Tell me what you saw. I still don't understand what I saw. What do you mean? Just that. Well, what happened? Dave and I were just talking. And you know Dave, cracking his jokes. Well, I was in awe at the mere thought that we were standing on a ball of fire and ice. Contradictory, isn't it? Fire and ice. You're trailing off. What happened? He said he saw something. He said he was going to check it out. He went over a ridge on the comet. I lost sight of him for a second, so I told him to be careful and remember not to disconnect from the cable to the ship. The next thing I knew, I heard this loud screech. The ship pulled away from the comet. Then I lost consciousness. When I came to, we were in deep space. I couldn't understand why we pulled off. Didn't the autopilot malfunction? That's what the news said. I guess that's what happened. So what did you do when you gained consciousness? Asked Dave to report in. He didn't answer. Once they pulled us back in, we found his cable snapped. What was so strange about that? Cables break. It happens. But the cable was clearly cut. The end was too clean to have been a tear in the cable. That means either he cut himself loose or... Or what? I don't know. He couldn't have done it himself. It's not something Dave would have done. What happened happened. No use wondering about it now. What a terrible way to die. The support systems only last so long. He either suffocated or froze to death or, worse, imploded. God, I hope his pressure stabilizer didn't break. What does it matter? If he had to die, I just wish he didn't have to suffer. As I said, no use worrying about it. You know, sometimes you can be really cold. 
Sorry, I don't see the point in falling in love. You might want to take a page from my book. Cats are a lot better than people. They're much less likely to hurt you. <laughs> Penny, I'm not going to be a spinster like you. You might need to try it. Who's the happier of the two of us? Point taken. Hey, do you want to look at the stars? I think it would be best if you don't. We went out here in the middle of nowhere to get away from all the stress. Yeah, it's not really working. I still dream about Dave. It'll get better. Time heals everything, honey. Does it really? Yeah, sure it does. If you say so. I know so. Now go back to sleep, because I'm tired and could use some shut-eye. Thanks for the concern, Penny. Hey, what are friends for? Now don't start working on your current thesis. You're here to relax, not work. I won't. I promise. Sure you won't. Night. Penny goes to bed. Sarah heads to the living room and starts to write some notes in her science journal, preparing her first draft for her thesis. A few hours pass by when Sarah starts to head to bed herself, but the lights go out. Hey! Penny, is this some type of joke? Penny? Penny, this is not funny. An astronaut enters the kitchen, radiating in light. Who the hell are you? This is private property. Get out before I call the cops. Are you listening? The astronaut walks towards Sarah. Hey, stay where you are, or I will call the cops. The astronaut pulls something out of his pocket. What's that? The astronaut continues to hold out his hand. Then the astronaut gestures for Sarah to come closer. Sarah cautiously approaches when... That's not possible. Dave, that's Dave's wedding ring. Where did you get that? Are you Dave? The astronaut nods. No, that's impossible. How do I know you're not lying? The astronaut pats the side of his chest. I don't understand. The astronaut picks up a cup of tea, points at himself, then Sarah and then pats the side of his chest. Do you mean... The astronaut nods. He walks up and leans a helmet against her forehead and strokes her hair. That was Dave and I's first kiss. I brought him back to my place after work, making some excuse it was work-related. I made him some tea and tried flirting with him. Dave was so nervous, he just sat there like an awkward schoolboy. I waited for him to make a move. It was so obvious he liked me, but he didn't do anything. So I got fed up and kissed him. Dave was so surprised he spilled tea down the side of my chest. I got so angry I could have slapped him. But then I saw his smiling, schoolboyish face. I forgot he spilled the tea. I couldn't help but laugh at how awkward you looked, and I... I never told anyone that. Sarah hugs the astronaut. How are you here? You died. The astronaut returns the hug. Can't you talk? The astronaut shakes his head. Why not? Here, use this. Sarah hands the astronaut her science journal and pen, opening the journal to a clean page. Now explain to me, how are you here? The astronaut writes, no time. We've got time. The astronaut shakes his head. What do you mean? They want me back. Who's they? Okay, this is ridiculous. Give me a straight answer. I can't. Can you at least remove the visor? I want to see your face. The astronaut shakes his head. Come on, why not? Sarah approaches the astronaut. He tries to back away. I just want to see your face again. Sarah lifts the helmet visor to reveal Dave's morbidly deformed face. Sarah startles back in shock. The astronaut shuts the visor back down. What happened to you, Dave? The astronaut pulls out a glass cylinder. Inside it is a rose made of ice. What's this? The astronaut writes, Haley. You made this from Haley's Comet? The astronaut nods. Look, this gift is nice and all, but why have you come back? Why now? Couldn't before. Needed to tell you something. Tell me what? It's not your fault. 
The astronaut hugs Sarah, then begins to walk away. Wait, where are you going? The astronaut walks out of the living room, turning the corner around the hall towards the front door. Sarah tries to follow, but as she turns the corner, she finds no sign of the astronaut. Hey, don't leave me. Don't leave me again. The lights come back on. Penny runs into the hallway. What's wrong? Didn't you see him? See who? Dick. Nothing, I guess. Let's just go to bed. Penny goes back to bed. Sarah looks at the ice rose. She smiles and cradles it. She looks longingly at the stars one last time before she goes to bed, taking the ice rose with her. That was Astronaut in a Cabin by Matthew Page. Sarah was played by Aubrey D'Angel. Penny was played by Chloe Brick. And the narrator was Mitchell Parker. We'll be back right after this. Has this ever happened to you? I have too many emotions. I just, I can't. I can't even. Never struggle again to find the perfect combination of facial expressions to communicate your emotional state. Now, from Generic Company, comes an astounding new product that will change the way you emote. Introducing Facepalm. Facepalm lets you take emotional expression into your own hands, literally. Wow, how does it work? Each Facepalm pack consists of 24 temporary tattoos of assorted facial expressions, ranging from anger and disgust to joy and casual indifference. Just slap these tattoos on your hands and wave goodbye to conversational confusion. Now you have three different faces to communicate with. Wow, this product is amazing! We know! Now put the excited expression on your hand and let everyone else know how you feel. Order now and receive a bonus pack of six indifferent expressions for everyday wear. Warning, facepalm temporary expression tattoos may cause skin peeling, irritation, loss of limbs, loss of friends, and death. Facepalm temporary tattoos. Give your face a hand. Heading into our next piece, prepare yourself for the Rickman and Rickman Comedy Hour by Adam Kane. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. To the show that will make you laugh so hard you will undergo severe convulsions. Yes, your assumptions are affirmed. This is the Rickman and Rickman Comedy Hour. For those of you that are new to the show... You should be acquainted with our celebrity. Yes, you may know my co-host as the famous Severus Snape from the Harry Potter films, the one and only Alan Rickman. And you may recognize my co-host, best known for his role as Hans Gruber in Die Hard, the indispensable Alan Rickman. No relation. (laughs) Today, on the Rickman and Rickman Comedy Hour, we have a very significant guest. Oh, and who would this esteemed individual be? Well, Alan, you may easily recognize him as the anthropomorphic canine from television programs such as animated cartoons. I am familiar with very few of these. Yes, as am I. But I saw him do a very dreary and foreboding poetry reading last Tuesday, and I deliberated that his presence on our program would be quite satisfactory. Hmm. I hope he's not that incorrigible dog I once encountered. A massive crimson pup named Clifford. Oh... What was wrong with him? I asked him what his favorite book was, and though he told me he couldn't read, he told me he was well read. (laughs) 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 Oh, Alan, you are a recognizably droll human being. Personally, my favorite book is A Comprehensive History of the Nail Trimmer. So... To get our program off with a pop, I have the mild pleasure of introducing our quiescent friend, Droopy Dog. Happy to be here, gentlemen. Tell me, Mr. Dog, do you mind if I call you Mr. Dog? 
Yes. Well, I wanted to inquire of your occupational prospects of today. Yes. What are they? Well, lately I have been out of work since all of my shows have been cancelled, but I have been finding my poetry readings to be quite successful. That sounds invigorating. Could you recite one? I'd rather not. If you don't, we will have to fill the airspace we've scheduled with more of Alan's song humming. I cannot sing, but I have been told my hums are quite unnerving. Fine, here's one I call the beige wool. Wool, brownish and flat, you speak to me flatly. You say, I'm a wool, and I am beige. Goodbye now. Titillating. Yes, I too am rather titled. Could you recite another? This one's called Extra Lint. Lint, extra and linty. You speak to me lintly. You say, I am lint and I am extra. Goodbye now. I am generally amused by your jovial arrangement of words. Thank you. I wrote that one when I found some extra lint in my pocket. Hmm. Now, Mr. Dog, this is a comedy program. And as you know, comedy often involves elements of humor. Unfortunately. So, tell me. What events from your past do you recount as particularly eventful? And preferably events of the humorous sort. Well, I can recall something that once gave someone a chuckle. He was chuckling at something else, but it happened in the same general vicinity. That counts. I had been walking down the boulevard when a man approached me and asked if I would please give his car a jump. Hmm. I said to him, Well, sir, I've never been very good at scaring automobiles, but I'll give it a try. Ah, I understand your cleverness now. I am afraid I don't... Ah, I too understand your cleverness now. Thank you, thank you. I thought of that one when I was jumped in an alleyway. Hmm. You're a very jumpy fellow. Uh... Well, Droopy Dog, thank you for joining us on this roller coaster the commoners call life. Yes, please present yourself to our show more frequently. Thank you, fellas. I will try to step by after the surgery. Good luck to you on that. Or should we say. Good lick. I, I don't get it. It is to my general understanding that canines lick things often with their tongues. Oh, I, I see. Well, bye, fellas. Yes, and a goodbye to you as well. Alan. Yes, Alan. Do you know what time it is? I'm afraid I cannot read your mind, Alan. It is time for the daily prank phone call. Oh, this tickles my fancy quite adequately. All right. Saddle up. Hello. Who is this? Do you have Prince Albert in a can? What? Do you have Prince Albert in a can? Prince, what does that even mean? It is a brand of tobacco called Prince Albert. What? No, I don't smoke. Well, you'd better let him out.
What? You see, the humor is that the brand of tobacco, Prince Albert, sounds as though Prince Albert is actually trapped inside of a can, which, of course, is a ridiculous notion that you have allowed us to draw attention to by telling us you have Prince Albert in a can. But I didn't... <laughs> oh, what a joyous farce is our lives. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Very articulate, Alan. Your humor was always very spot on. I must confess something, Alan. I was reciting that from one of Shakespeare's comedies. I would never have guessed. It sounds very modern. Yes. Well, Alan, I'm afraid that our time is depleted for this afternoon. Already. I thought we had fifty minutes left. Yes, the time just flew by, didn't it? I suppose that time accelerates in moments of mild amusement. I wouldn't know. Well, everyone, have a cautiously pessimistic day. As you go out into the world, remember that the ever-prevalent fog of nothingness will always wait for you, and so will this show continue to let the chuckles seep into the airwaves and drip drop into your ears in a similar fashion. Excelsior. <sighs> the end. That was the Rickman and Rickman Comedy Hour by Adam Kane. Rickman 1 was played by Adam Kane. Rickman 2 was played by Walter Lutch. Droopy was played by Adam Kane, and the person who answers the phone was played by Julia Rutledge. And now, a quick commercial. Thanksgiving is a time for appreciating what you have. But it's also a time for throwing out that old stuff you just can't appreciate anymore. The new Thanksgiving tradition is celebrating our freedom to shop and get amazing deals. And, in the spirit of consumerism, Brooding Zinc brings you just a small sampling of our amazing Thanksgiving and Black Friday products. Stuffing the Thanksgiving turkey is a family tradition for many, part of what makes the holiday, but it's gross and slippery. So this year, get the automatic turkey stuffer. Just attach the turkey with the steel clamps and place the bowl of stuffing underneath our patented automated hand. Now you can have the flavor and the tradition of a stuffed turkey without having to put your hands inside a dead animal. Everyone's heard of door buster deals on Black Friday and every other major shopping holiday, but never before has anyone busted down a door quite like this. Behold the door buster, a patent pending personal battering ram capable of demolishing even the sturdiest of department store entrances. Why wait until 8 or 9 p.m. Thursday night for those amazing deals when you can get in early? The door buster has been completely from 5 inch thick welded steel as collapsible so it can be fit into a large purse or tote bag. So get the gift that lets you get even more gifts! Face it, you're just not that good a cook. Your turkey comes out burnt, your vegetables have been steamed so long, there's no flavor left. But no one needs to know that your culinary skills aren't up to snuff because now there's Restore Flavor brand seasonings. Using a combination of sugar, salt, and the liquefied version of any dish, you can put the flavor back into that crusted Thanksgiving turkey or those watery greens. Just sprinkle an even light coating of the Restore Flavor you need and your friends and family will be begging for the recipe. All of these fine products brought to you by Brooding Zinc. We'll see you at Christmas time. Our last script for this episode is Leave Your Message by Walter Lutch. To listen to your messages, please press 1. Hey, Em, it's Hank. I know it's still a ways off, but we were talking about doing a surprise party for Sarah's birthday, and I think I've got the perfect plan. Listen to this. We ask her boss to call her on a day she's not working and get her to drive out to a field to meet, I don't know, a supplier or something? Maybe a clay vendor or whatever. Anyway, and she's like waiting out there and it comes skydiving down with like a big happy birthday sign. Although, I don't know if they let you carry a sign while you're falling through the air. Maybe we could drop confetti or something. She's just waiting and out of nowhere, confetti is raining down! And she looks up and sees it's yelling, happy birthday! Then we could go out to Applebee's or something. Let me know what you think. Bye! 
Hello, Miss Atilia. This is William Crane from McClay Trading. We're very pleased to say that you impressed us very much in your interview, and we'd like to offer you the position of IT supervisor. I've gone ahead and sent our offer letter along with the details on the pre-employment physical, confidentiality agreement, and background check we'd need should you accept the position. Congratulations, and I hope to hear back from you soon. It would be a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. Bye. Hey you, just wanted to call and say how proud I am of you. We didn't have time to talk much, but I am so happy you got this job offer. Working at that coffee shop just drains you every day, and I know you want to be doing more than just filling drink orders. Also, I accidentally let slip to Sarah about it when I came in today. She'll probably call you. I didn't think you were going to make it a surprise or anything, but if you were, I'm sorry. I'll be up at my mom's tonight, but I'll send you a text when I'm heading back into the city. Love you. Bye. Have you heard about our new special? You will receive two months of the Daily Herald Sunday edition with a weekly subscription. For less than the cost of a postage stamp, you'll get the morning paper plus two months of the Sunday paper. Call the Daily Herald at 1-800-555-6177. Emily! I heard from Grant that you were offered the position at McClay. I hope I didn't ruin you telling me about it, but he just about shouted it to the store when he came into work today. Congratulations! We have to go get a drink and celebrate tonight. Call me back as soon as you're off work today. And hey, you and Hank aren't planning something for my birthday, are you? Because you know I'll find out, whatever it is. Anyway, call me, bye. Really not my interest at all. And that's okay. In fact, let me... Oh, I pocket dialed somebody. Emily Satilia. wow, uh... Hey Emily, it's Mike. I accidentally pocket dialed you. Sorry about that. But since I did, we should catch up sometime. I haven't seen you since we graduated, and it'd be nice to know what's up with you. Give me a call, and we'll grab coffee or something. Bye. Hey, Emily, it's Kayla. It's been a while. I saw on Facebook you got a new job. I'm so happy for you. Things aren't going so great back at home. Dad's unemployment finally ran out, so I moved back in with him to help share the rent. I know you're out there living your life and all, but... We could really use some help, Em. And even if you can't, Dad would love to see you. Give him a call, maybe meet him for lunch or something. It was better when Mom kept the family together. Anyway, congratulations. Hope it all works out great. Talk to you later. Hello. This is a message from your Tule County Library System for Emily Satilia. You have two holds available at the downtown branch. Please pick them up at your convenience. Thank you. Hello, Miss Atelia. This is Dr. Lehman calling from Tompkins General. The results have come back from your pre-employment physical examination. Please give me a call as soon as you can. My extension at the hospital is 6462. If you need, you can call my cell at area code 485-427-3699. Hey, Em! It's Hank! You're right. The skydiving thing wouldn't work. I mean, I'm afraid of heights. It's a terrible idea. But I've got a better one. Sarah's favorite animal is giraffes, right? So we rent one, and we walk it past her office window. Wouldn't that be awesome? She's sitting at work, and bam! There's a giraffe walking past her window. She's only on the second floor, right? So the giraffe is tall enough. Let me know what you think. Bye bye Hello, Miss Cecilia. This is William Crane from McClay Trading. I got your message about investing. I'm glad to see that you're so interested in our business, and it's wonderful that you're thinking ahead about your finances. I can certainly open some investments in your family's name if you would like, although our employee interest rates are a bit better than the general customers. You might want to just wait the few days until you're a full employee, although I suppose we can always transfer your investments once you officially start. Yes, that'll work just as well. I'll get started on a spec portfolio for you, and you can call me back or set up a meeting at the office at your convenience. Bye now. Hello, Miss Satilia. This is Nurse Vaughn at Tompkins General. I know this is a difficult time for you, but you missed your follow-up appointment today. I can't stress how important it is to get you started on treatments as soon as possible. Please call me back anytime. The extension here is 7444. Hey, you goof. It's Sarah. What's with the birthday present? It's a whole nother month away. I swear, if this is you and Hank putting some kind of, like, 
time delay confetti bomb on my doorstep. I'm gonna put this box in a closet until it's my actual birthday. But call me, Em. You gotta let me know if we're on for that movie tomorrow night. Hello, this is a message for Emily Satilia. This is Officer Brooks calling from the 16th Street Precinct. Your vehicle, license plate number 037-WGE, was found parked along the Rosenko River Bridge. That area is a strict no-parking zone, and your vehicle has been towed to the police impound lot at 22023 Meridian. You can collect your vehicle there after paying the illegal parking ticket and tow charge. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me at the station at 959-076-4391. Thank you. Give your credit a boost with the Gothcorp Mutual Card today! With an APR as low as 16.9%, you can feel safe making those last-minute purchases. Call us today at 1-888-555-5347! Hey honey, it's your dad. I'm here at Cafe Spark. It's about 1.45. I was really excited that you wanted to have lunch, so I'm just checking in to see where you are. If... Listen, if you don't want to come, that's okay. I understand. But you just give me a call and let me know you're okay, all right, honey? I love you. Bye. Emily, um, I haven't heard from you in a few days, and, well, with all that stuff about the police dredging the river, I... I need to hear from you. Please call me, tell me you're okay. I... I love you. Bye. I just wanted to hear your voice again. It's it's my birthday, Em, and I opened your present. Just uh, just wanted to say thanks for thinking of me and thinking of everybody before you, you know. Goodbye, Emily. Goodbye. There are no more messages. The end. That was Leave Your Message by Walter Lutch. Hank was played by Matthew Page. William Crane was played by Mitchell Parker. Grant and Officer Brooks were played by Adam Kane. The Daily Herald rep was played by Chloe Brick. Sarah was played by Rebecca Reeder. The Girl and Kayla were played by Julia Rutledge. Mike was played by Trent Browning. The Library System and Arthur were played by Walter Lutch. Dr. Lehman and the Voicemail Voice were played by Aubrey D'Angelo. The Nurse was played by Jackie Campbell. And the Credit Card Offer was performed by Wyatt Chapman. With that, we've come to the end of another episode of Viking Radio Theater. For more information on future air dates on KMRE and Western's KGS Radio, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash vikingradiotheater. And you can always listen to all of our past episodes on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash vikingradiotheater. The writers who contributed to this episode are Eaton Lowenstein, Matthew Page, Adam Kane, and Walter Lutch. Our chief sound engineer is Blair Lorenzo, and Viking Radio Theater's theme music was written and composed by Cat Miller. From the cast and crew of Viking Radio Theater, Thanks for listening. 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 Thanks for listening.